Morning folks, welcome to Monday's Devotions. We're going to do a wee series on the Spook of Psalms. We had previously covered the first four Psalms, so I'm going to start at Psalm 5. And what I'm going to do is going to read a wee part of the Psalm, then talk about it, and then read a wee bit more and do it that way. So this is a Psalm of David, and we'll begin reading the first three verses. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my groanings. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice, in the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you, and watch. Now, David is in some sort of trouble here. He he talks in the first verse about him groaning. He speaks in verse 2 about the sound of his cry. So he's gone through some trial, some difficult day. And yet he comes with an expectation that God will hear him. He says, give ear to my words, give attention to the sound of my cry. There's also a great humility and reverence with David. He calls the Lord my king and my God. My king, which speaks of him submitting to God. And my God speaks of him coming in, a, in an attitude of, of worship and of praise. And the reason why he expects that God will hear him is because he has God at the very heart, at the very centre, at the first place in his life. Look at verse 3. O oh Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. So he begins his day with prayer. He begins his day with a sacrifice. He is devoted to the Lord. Now can we expect God will hear us? That God will answer our prayers? If we're not devoted to the Lord, if we're not, if we don't have the Lord in the first place in our lives, we need to have God in the right place. And then he moves on to speak about the wicked in verses four to six. And he says, for you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell of you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. Now this is a, a words of praise from David that the Lord does not delight in wickedness and the evil cannot dwell in his presence. What sort of God would God be if he just winked at sin? What sort of God would he be if he didn't care about the evil that people commit? You know, People point the finger at God, that God would judge them, that God would condemn them to hell. Do we really want a God who doesn't care about people's sin? Do we really want a God who doesn't care about those who commit murder or rape or those who are pedophiles? Do we want a God that doesn't care about people who indeed commit awful genocide? And yet, we want a God just to ignore our sin, but a God who will punish the sin of others. David's delight is the Lord hates sin. The Lord hates all that is evil. God will punish that which is evil. Praise God that part of his perfection is that he is a just God. He is a God that will do right. He is a God that will punish all evil. But let's read the next bit. Verse 7. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in the fear of you. Leave me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. Now, David says the reason why he, who's not perfect and has sinned in his life, the reason why he can come before the Lord is because of his steadfast love or his covenant love. The way that sinners can be right with God is that God has given his son to be the saviour and those who trust in Christ enter into a covenant, a, a relationship of promises with the Lord. And the way that we can come into God's presence, the God into whose presence evil cannot enter, the way that we who are far from perfect will be able to come into God's presence is indeed 
because of God's wonderful plan of salvation in Jesus. And in Jesus, God's wonderful promises are yes. Now, part of being a redeemed child of God is that we then want God's will to be done in our lives. Verse 8, lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. David wants to do that which pleases the Lord. He does. He isn't saved and then just live in his sin. Oh no, that is so alien to him. He's saved so that he can then live a life of righteousness. The next part then he speaks about the wicked, verses 9 to 10 again. He says, for there's no truth in their mouth. Their inmost self is destruction. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of the abundance of their transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. David just can't stand the deceit, the lies that come out of the mouths of those who did are evil. Their flattering words just do not impress him. In many ways, our words will reveal a lot about ourselves. Our words will reveal what's true truly within our hearts. And David wants the Lord to to bring these people to to punishment, to justice, because of the abundance of their transgressions. One of the ways we know that we are saved is we become to despise sin. We see sin as something that's personal against God. We grow into an intolerance for sin. Yes, we should have a love to sinners, but Sin should hurt us more and more. Sin in the lives of others, and even more so sin within our own lives. And then he comes back to the righteous in verses 11 and 12. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy, and spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favour. As with a shield. Here we see that the righteous use their tongues in a different way. The wicked use their tongues for deceitfulness and flattery. The righteous use their tongues for the praise of the Lord, for exalting God's name. And the result is that the righteous are those who will be blessed, they will be protected by the Lord. They are those who will forever know the Lord as their shield. Where do you stand? Are you with the wicked who have resisted the Lord? The wicked who their lies, their mouths, their tongues have deceit and flattery? Or are you among the righteous who have come and embraced the Lord's steadfast love? Who have come that God's will would be done in your life? Who have come to live a life of righteousness, which is a life of obedience to the Lord, that his will will indeed set the agenda. Oh, let's learn from this. The wicked are punished, but the righteous will be exalted. Amen.